Hello YouTube. This is an extended video on plants of Oman. Uh, many of these plants will be found all over the Arabian Peninsula, uh, some of them even in parts of North Africa and the Middle East. Um, it's basically a collection of plants that I've seen in working in Oman and um, I'm just going to go through them very very quickly um, just to show you what's out there. Uh, if there are any mistakes in this video it's all my own mistakes and um, that's just life. Uh, I didn't have the best reference materials for finding out some of these plants names but anyway um, this is this first one is Senegalia Senegal or Acacia Senegal as it was previously known the three hook thorn because it has three thorns at each node um, from the family Fabaceae. This is the characteristic umbrella thorn of Africa and um, the Arabian Peninsula Acacia tortillus um, also from the Fabae. Acaranthus aspera is a um, member of the Amaranthaceae and is a typical weed that is found in many parts of the world actually. Adansonia digitata, the baobab tree from the Bombacaceae. Um, Adansonia digitata is specifically from Africa. This is a planted specimen. There is a grove of uh, these baobab trees in Dofar, in um, the Dofar governorate, governorate of Oman. That's in the kind of uh, monsoon rain area where there's quite a lot of vegetation. This is Ova Javanica. Uh, the flowers are very fluffy or fruits and they're often used to, to fill pillows. Um, they were used by the locals to fill pillows. Aloe dufarensis, one of the aloe species. Aloes are great for treating skin and skin ailments, um, particularly keeping the skin moist and treating burns. Um, it's originally from the Liliaceae, then it's now Asphodelaceae, uh, but it's it's changed. The name, the family name, has changed several times. Aloe enormous, another aloe found in Dofar. Anogysis dofarica. This tree was only described many years later after the first European explorers were going around and it's actually a very common tree but somehow it was overlooked. It's from the Combrataceae which is the bush willow family. Balleria or Cariana. You know, they've got these tiny pretty flowers. Um, there are other species. Uh, there's one with orange flowers which I believe is Balleria proxima if I remember correctly from the Acanthaceae. Bentia fruticulosa has these pretty white flowers. Um, the close up, I think I may have a slide further on that has a close up of the flower. Also from the Acanthaceae. Blepharis dofarensa, another Acanthaceae species. Blepharis burmum hurtum. Boschia arabica. The shepherd's tree called shepherd's tree because um, a lot of animals like goats like to browse in these trees and they are succulent trees or trees able to withstand very very dry conditions and typically found in very arid areas. Ah, Boswellia sacra which is Luban or frankincense uh, the, the famous frankincense tree. These trees actually grow outside of the rain shadow uh, in Dofar, so they actually don't like a lot of rain. Um, they tend to prefer drier conditions. They produce a copious resin when injured and that resin produces the um, the product that they use for medicinal purposes as well as for burning incense, uh, obviously known as frankincense, frankincense um, which is used to perfume clothing, to perfume the air and um, in some instances to ward off evil spirits. Cadaba farinosa of the Caparaceae. Um, this is the caper family. Uh, very very pretty little flowers. Uh, very inconspicuous but very pretty flowers. Capris cartilaginea. Sorry, this is a very common uh, species of creeping plant from the family uh, found in Dofar and it produces these really large fruits which are said to be edible. They're certainly a favorite of birds and the red color is certainly an attractant color for birds. Caroluma flavor of the Apocynaceae which is the oleander family. 
This particular specimen was photographed right at a grave site. You can see the rocks on the top right hand photograph there. That is a um, grave site was in Dofar of a Jabali tribesmen. Um, these are very old grave sites, some of them several hundred years old. Centauria pseudosanaica, a very spiny plant from the Asteraceae or Daisy. Chrysopogon cerulata, one of the grass species, so there are a number of grass species, um, a lot of them are quite um, hard and, and sharp actually. For example, a, a lot of the Dactyloctinium species are, are quite um, harsh, obviously to discourage grazers. Cleome drosserifolia, um, it has these kind of glands in the leaves. Just go back to that of the Caryophyllaceae or pink family. This is Comitis cirrotensis. Comicarpus boisieri. This is from the Nectagenaceae, which is the Bougainvillea family. It has very characteristic little, pretty little purple flowers. Comifera gileadensis. This is from the Bursaraceae or Myrrh family. Um, and includes all the coniferous species. Uh, we sometimes call them corkwood trees in southern Africa and they produce a resin uh, just as frankincense does and um, it has a number of purposes. The ash of this tree is also used for um, for, for making um, toothpaste. Convolvulus vergata, this is one of the morning glory species that is found in Oman obviously all creepers. Corcoris depressus of the Sparmaniaceae, which is the stock rose family. Cordiovalis, uh, these are the saucerberry trees. Uh, they have these sort of um, round yellow berries with a saucer-like um, appendage on, around the edge, uh, hence the name. Crotillaria egyptiaca, this is uh, one of the many small um, sort of bushes that occurs with yellow flowers and um, they can be, often be confused with plants like Dipterygium glaucum and other species which have yellow flowers and Ocridena. This is one of the Cucumis species, um, perhaps Cucumis profitorum, um, which is, this is Symbopogon, one of the um, turpentine grass species. I'm not sure exactly what the specific species is of this. Cypress conglomeratus, one of the Cyperaceae or sedge species that is very common in many areas in Oman. Dactylic Loctenium rebeccii. Uh, this is one of the grass species that I mentioned that has very very stout or sharp uh, leaves, leaves which discourages uh, browsers. From the Poaceae or grass family. Diarophytum indicum, uh, this is a lovely little tree. Um, the ash is used um, as a snuff, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. From the Plumbaginaceae, which is the Plumbago family. Um, one will recall those from garden plants, uh, various Plumbagos, which usually have blue flowers. Egbolium viridi. Um, a kind of clustered inflorescence like this, um, typical of this plant. Echinops spinosissimus, uh, spinosissimus meaning very spiny and Echinops also meaning spiny um, as in a, a, a hedgehog and you can see why they call this plant by that name, also called the globe thistle. This is a an orchid species, one of the few orchid species actually found in Dofar, Epipactus ferratrifolia. It's actually quite fairly common, especially in a lot of the wadis uh, near water. So um, a very, very nice little orchid. Euclea shimperi, uh, these trees typically of this genus have kind of wavy edged leaves and they tend to occur in very salty areas, usually with compacted soils from the Ebenaceae or Ebony family. 
Euphorbia balsamifera, um, one of the many Euphorbia species. Euphorbias are highly toxic. They have a white milky latex, which is um, caustic and can often cause blisters. Another Euphorbia species from Dofar, Euphorbia cactus, which looks cactus-like, of course, but totally unrelated, a different family completely. Euphorbia larica, um, this also has a very caustic white or milky latex. Here we have a species called Exicum. Uh, this is found in a lot of very, very wet areas, in streams, um, in the wadis. Uh, so wherever you have permanent water, you typically, and dripping water, you're going to typically find these Eximum flowers. And they, they're very tiny little flowers. Not very conspicuous until you're pretty close up. And um, yeah, occur in wet areas. Fagonia indica and Fagonia ovalifolia, uh, two species of quite pretty little flowers. Um, Fagonia ovalifolia, as the name suggests, the species name, has oval shaped leaves. Um, so that's from the Zygophyllaceae, which is a, a common family, a family with many species in, in Dofar. Ficus silicifolia. Silicifolia means uh, willow-like leaves and it's one of the several fig species that occur from the family Moraceae, which is the fig and mulberry family um, that occurs in Dofar. Fluegia verosa. Fluegia verosa has uh, these berries uh, which are edible, I believe. Gomphocarpus Carpus fruticosa is uh, one of the Asclepiids, um, so that's the milkweed family and um, a classic example of milkweeds having a symbiotic relationship with um, a specific species is um, you'll have caterpillars from the milkweed weed but butterfly that um, feed on this plant and they'll use the toxins to protect themselves and then they produce these they have these bright colors, which are aposematic or warning colors on the on the caterpillars, which warn animals that they are toxic. Gossypium stoxii, this is from the genus that produces the cotton that we use in making our clothing. Um, and this is just the specific species from Dofar. A very characteristic looking um, member of the Malvaceae, which is the the hibiscus family. There's a Gruyer species. Gruyer are well known in Africa, particularly beneath the um, Sahel, lower down from the Sahel, where they are used to, they have edible raisins or, or, or fruits that are used. They sometimes call, call them raisin bushes. And um, I believe the wood was also used by the Bushmen to make bows because it's quite flexible. Gruyer velosa, another species. You can see the berry on the right hand side. It's got four sort of lobes and they sometimes call them cross berries in Southern Africa for that very reason. Heliotropium, phytocancer. Heliotropiums have these flowers that um, sort of form I guess they're called cymes, if I remember correctly. Um, it's an inflorescence, a group of inflorescences that um, appear on the end of the stem. Here's another example here of a different species, Heliotropium longiflorum. This is an indigo species, indigo fira. Uh, you can see the pods developing um, on, the, on the bush, the red ones there. Uh, this is also an indigo species. Indigos were used to make a blue dye, um, which clothed, uh, which was very, very intense and was very popular in ancient times. This is Ipomoea pes capri. Um, this is one of the convolvulaceae or um, morning glory species. And of course, pes capri means goat footed. Uh, you can see the leaves look like the tracks of a goat. Uh, Keleronia gelletti. This is a very pretty and quite robust 
yellow flower. Um, it grows on a small bush that you found in Dofar. Kixia, these are very, very fine little plants, uh, very difficult to kind of pick out. Um, not very, very obvious, but when they flower, they produce these pretty little flowers. This is just one of the species from the plantain family, Plantagenaceae. Lornea in Tabaceae. Um, this is one of uh, the species of Asteraceae that grows in the Dofar region. You can see it as a typical leaf uh, shape um, that one would expect with many daisy species. It's deeply dissected or um, lobed and um, you know it, it was is typical of many species from the Asteraceae. Lawsonia enormis is the famous henna which is used by Indians um, to dye their skin. Um, it's, it's not a permanent dye, it lasts for a few days, but they make really decorative hand um, decorations um, from, from this plant, uh, from the Lithraceae or Pride of India family, Lawsonia enormis or henna. Cucuma sativus uh, or Lufa cutangula, I can't remember you know, when I identified this slide. It's from the cucumber family and it's one of the two species, if I remember correctly. Or one, and they, they two, if you look at the leaves actually, it looks like there's two different species here. But I did this quite a while back, so I can't remember. Maitinus or Gymnosporia diaphorensis is one of the spike thorns. Um, from the Celestraceae, which is the spike thorn family. These bushes are very diverse and they're very difficult to distinguish actually. They, you know, it usually takes an expert to accurately identify different bushes from this, from this group. Moremia somalensis from the Malvaceae or Hibiscus family, a very characteristic flower with a very dark center. Um, it's also common. This is a Moringa peregrina. Moringas are, have an edible pod. The pod can actually be cooked when it's still green and, um, and is edible and nutritious. And they produce these really long needle-like leaves, almost pine-like in appearance. Um, not this, the shape of the tree, but the leaves themselves at least. Pergularia tomentosa. Of the Apocynaceae. This is a creeping plant. Um, these pictures are so bad because this, most of the pictures I've taken are actually were taken with a cell phone and the light made it very difficult for me to see whether the pictures were in focus or not. The, there's an intense sunlight in Dofar and all over Oman actually and it's, it's a really intense and washed out sunlight and it makes it very difficult to see what's going on on your screen. So forgive me if the pictures are, are not very clear. Periploca viscosum, it's one of two species. Um, this one has yellow flowers. You can see in the bottom left picture there, you can see the yellow flowers. Um, Periploca viscosum. The other species is Periploca aphyla, which is a purple leaves. Phoenix dactylifera, which is the common date palm from the Aracaceae or palm family. Uh, these typically are found usually where there's water um, and uh, so you typically find them in, in wadis, wadis, wadi beds or on the edges of cliffs where water is seeping out of the cliff face. Phragmites australis, um, one of the species of reeds in Oman. Pluchia arabica, a uh, common little plant with blue flowers that is found and interestingly enough the seeds um, are said to be dispersed by um, by rodents and also um, the, the flowers are said to be pollinated by rodents in the area. They have golden spiny mice and other mice that occur in the area so they they likely to be associated with this plant. Uh, Polygula um, this is Polygula and Polygula muscatensis. Um, 
they have these these flowers with a um, with all the anthers fused basically to form a brush like um, structure and it's characteristic of the flowers this is Pycnocycla orcariana another one of the spicy bushes a uh, spiny bushes rather from the APAC which is the carrot family Reseda orcarii this is very similar to Ecbolium viridi uh, similar flower structure, inflorescent structure. Uh, both are found in very dry, rocky areas. Rus sinalensa, uh, one of the um, or the species of um, plants related to sumacs, the American sumacs. Uh, the genus may now have changed. May it might be Searsia for this particular species. S e a r s i a. Um, from the Anacardiaceae, which is the cashew nut family. They typically have trifoliate leaves, but not always. Salsola drummondii, it's one of the many succulents from the Chenopodiaceae. A lot of the species of the Chenopodiaceae or goosefoot family are actually edible. Um, the leaves can actually be eaten, although most of the time I'd be cautious to eat anything that is succulent because a lot of succulents are highly toxic. Salvadora persica, um, the toothbrush tree, and um, this is a spreading bush. It has a very characteristic smell to it and um, the, the young twigs are broken off and then chewed and used as a kind of a toothbrush uh, in Dofar by the Jabali people, the local Jabali tribesmen. Sanseviera Ehrenbergiana. Um, so in the foreground, actually those are aloes, but in the in the back there is the Sanseviera, the greener one. Um, the foreground plants are aloe enormous, I believe. Um, so yeah, if you look at the top plant um, the, with the green leaves, it's a mother-in-law's tongue it's called because it has very very sharp leaf tips, um, kind of like a mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> so Sanseviera erinbergiana, which is uh, one of the endemics to uh, Dofar. Senna from the Fabaceae. Uh, there are a lot of center species that grow around. Many of them are often weeds in many parts of the world. I'm not certain whether this specific species is a weed in Oman, but quite possibly. Senra incarna, one of the Malvaceae. It's just the plant without the flower. Savada shimperi, another of the Chenopodiaceae. Solanum incarnum um, from Solanaceae. This is one of the potato family plants that grow in Dofar. Sturculia africana. This is not a great example of one. It's very dried up and everything, but um, it is a star chestnut uh, tree. I think I might have a slide of a larger specimen further on. African star chestnuts. They have these pods that form star-like clusters and uh, that are dehiscent. In other words, they, they, they kind of dry and then open up to release the seeds. Tamarix aphyla, uh, they have these sort of uh, scale-like leaves that have the appearance of um, uh, many of the cedars um, or junipers. And it's one of the plants that's found typically in areas where there is some water usually at the edge upper edge of a, a water line so where there's a, a pool or a pond at the upper edge of where the, the maximum water level reaches Taverniera cunifolia um, another one of the Fabaceae Tephrosia nubica Another species with very pretty little flowers. Another Tephrosia species, I believe. There are many different species. Um, some of these identifications may not be accurate as far as the Tephrosia are concerned, but I did my best. 
Tribulus terrestris, the puncture vine. This is a weed that grows in many parts of the world. It's called a puncture vine because it produces these seeds that have very sharp spines on them. And um, yeah, they puncture all kinds of things, including people's feet. Trichodesma hildebrandtii. They've got these wonderful little flowers, um, very characteristic um, from the barrage family and um, once again you know not necessarily the most obvious plant to see but if you are observant and careful you can find them and it's delightful to see this little flower vetiver pseudo lab lab bit of a mouthful that one it's uh, one of the creepers that grows indofar it's typical characteristic trifoliate leaves as you can see there Withania somnifera, one of the weeds that grows um, in southern Oman from the Solanaceae, the potato family. Woodfordia uniflora, uh, an endemic tree species or bush species with red flowers that grows in Dofar from the pride of um, India family, Lithraceae. Zizifus spina christi, Christ thorn, um, it's got zigzagging branches with hooked and straight thorns and um, it's from the Ramnaceae, the dogwood family and it produces edible fruits. Tetraodena or Zygophyllum simplex, uh, one of the many species of the Zygophyllaceae um, and these plants uh, actually you will find in many areas with a typical characteristic um, yellow flower. This is Nanorops richardii. This is the uh, indigenous fan palm that is found so far. It's, I think it's actually an endemic. Endemic. It's, I don't think it's found any, anywhere else in the world. And um, you typically find them growing in these dense stands. Um, and they have a number of uses. Uh, I've seen Jubali woman weaving uh, mats, etc., with these leaves and they have this very hard seed kernel um, as well. This is Adenium obesum. Okay, Adenium obesum is the Apisanaceae family. It has these pink flowers. It has a very succulent stem and, and the flowers are very, very pretty and they last for quite long. Blepharus scindica. Uh, from the Acanthaceae, you can see a very spiny plant. Cadaba heterotrica. Uh, earlier we saw the Cadaba farinosa, which had very fine flowers with um, sort of bluish gray leaves. Um, this is another species of the Caparaceae, Cadaba heterotrica. And then there's Merua crassifolia, um, is, is yet another species that's found in this. And then Capris cartilaginea. All species that are found in the Caparaceae or Capo family. This is Cissus quadrangularis. You'll typically find this on top of the escarpment in Dofar. Um, it tends to occur in rocky areas and it produces these um, cactus like stems. It's actually from the Vitaceae, which is the grape family. It is used to treat broken bones. It has tendrils growing from the nodes of the stems, which is typical of the grape family. And um, yeah, so this is quadrangularis, an interesting plant. Calculus balfori, one of the many creeping plants from the Menispermaceae, which is the moon seed family. The seeds are half moon shaped, hence the name. This Calculus pendulus, another species, which also grows as a creeper from hanging from rock walls. This is a Fagonia indica. You can see a tiny little bush with those little purple flowers um, and, and quite spiny leaves. Ocridenis or Keri has these very delicate yellow flowers um, and it is found in many parts of, of Oman um, and there are several species and it's a delightful little bush. Pentatropus nivalis is one of the many creepers. It's got very fine leaves. Um, they're quite tiny. 
not much bigger than a person's um, pinky nail um, and yeah they creep up a lot of plants uh, you'll typically find them creeping over other plants periploca aphyla so yes a um, another periploca a, a species where you have the purple flower rather than the yellow In the Laurentiaceae, you have um, parasitic, hemiparasitic plants such as Plicocephalus um, shrimpari, which is these yellow flowers. There's another one called Plicocephalus acaciae, which we'll show later. Um, and they typically grow as hemiparasites using Haustoria, house which are these parasitic roots to get nutrients from plants that they grow on. Razia stricta, this is a common. Um, weed that grows in a lot of desert areas it forms these rather large little bushes and um, very characteristic pods uh, typical of the Apocynaceae or oleander family Zizyphus leucodermis uh, one of the indigenous species of Zizyphus growing in the desert um, the seeds are really hard the the outer flesh of the fruits is uh, somewhat edible um, and the local people apparently did crush the seed kernels and eat them this is um, one of the few fern species that grows in Oman because it's so dry but this is Audiantum capillus veneris and um, it is typically found in wet areas so always on seeping um, water courses on rock faces or um, on the rocks beside a stream or a wadi flow um, so it's one of the maiden hair fern species and it's one of the few that are found in Oman a butylon panosum uh, another malvasi or hibiscus family species Azun canariensa, these are very very tiny plants with very small leaves, uh, very flat scanned or spreading plants um, and they have these tiny purple flowers um, very easy to walk right past one of them without even blinking at it twice Azun canariensa this plant um, I'm not certain of and I'm yeah what can I say have no idea Ami Magus this is a plant from the APAC or carrot family that grows um, Indofar you typically find it in rocky areas on the slopes just coming off um, the wadi beds very delicate plant Arnebia hispidisma the Arabian primrose from the Baraginaceae uh, it's kind of hairy looking with these characteristic yellow flowers Boschia albitrunca uh, one of the Boschia species or shepherd's tree species this is quite a small specimen Campylanthus uh, flowers these uh, there are many different species and kind of hard to identify them at least for me anyway from the uh, snapdragon family Scrophulariaceae. Sencra ciliaris, one of the grass species, uh, typical in Oman, and you'll actually find the species in many other parts of the world too. Chrysophora oblongifolia, they have these um, characteristic ball like fruits, and um, it makes a medium sized plant. Sustanki rosea, this is also one of the parasitic plants from the Scrophulariaceae. It grows on the roots of um, corkwood trees from the myrrh family, so Commiferaceae, or, or Commifera rather, from uh, the Bursteraceae or myrrh family. This is Cleome brachycarpa, another of the Cleomaceae species. Cleome scaposa, another species of Cleome. Cleome austroarabica, which has the characteristic sort of glandular leaves. Dicoma shimperi has these ball like flowers. Diplotaxis hara, 
from the Brassicaceae, which is the mustard family, uh, typically with four petals um, for that family. There's a Fagonia valleyfolia again. Ficus sycamorus, one of the larger fig species, um, very common in Africa, in many parts of Africa, all the way down to southern Africa. Uh, sycamore fig, very popular with many animals. Galeonia orcheri, um, from the gardenia family, Rubiaceae, these pretty little white flowers. Blossonema varians, this is a, an edible fruit, that spiny looking fruit there is actually edible and a very small, uh, difficult to find bush. So quite a delight to find one of them. This is Gymnocarpus rotundifolia from the pink family, Caryophyllae. Gypsophila montanum, another little plant from the pink family. Borohavia elegans from the Nectagenaceae. It's related also to that Comicarpus boisieri, um, which are all from the um, Bougainvillea family, Nectagenaceae. Yes, uh, from the Cystaceae, Helianthemum citrinum, very pretty little yellow, striking yellow flowers, which contrast with the gray, light gray leaves. This is some kind of Helichrysum species, if I'm not mistaken, from the Asteraceae. This is Herniaria muscatensis, uh, another small little plant that is creeping and that is very, very similar to Izun canariensa in, in general habit or appearance. This is Indigofera cerulea, another indigo species. Inigofiera endricata, it's a very small species which can sometimes be confused with Izun canariensa. Um, these plants are very are, are nitrogen fixating fixation plants, so they are quite important in the ecology of many areas. And um, so, you know, a, a lot of animals favor them too. So you typically find a lot of porcupines, Indian crested porcupines. Uh, frequenting areas where these plants grow. This is one of the larger species, Indigofera oblongifolia. Um, you'll typically find these large bushes in close association with um, Tamarix aphyla um, along the edges of water courses. Iphiona or Kerai. This is one of the Iphiona species, um, one of the many yellow flowered daisy species that one finds. And here's another species, Iphona scabra, which is more spiny. This is Linnea castanospermum. Um, they're one of the several species of Linnea, of the Asteraceae that occur in Oman. Lavandula hosicensis. This is a lavender species that occurs specifically in the Dofar region. And this, as the name suggests, was found in Hussik, near the town of Hussik and is, is quite, has a quite, a, quite a narrow range. Limonia maxillari, the sea lavender. Uh, this is called the sea lavender because it's typically found fairly close to, uh, to coastlines. And so you'll find them either on the tops of cliffs or next to estuaries, or very close by to estuaries. Argaro lobium roseum um, from the Fabaceae. It's another typical trifoliate leaved plant, creeping plant from the Fabaceae or pea family. Moretia parviflora, uh, also from the Brassicaceae, typical uh, four petaled flower once again. And um, this is quite a delightful little plant, pretty and exciting to find. This is a weed, Phyla nodiflora, you'll find it typically growing um, on grass lawns and uh, sort of wetter, more well watered areas from the Verbenaceae or Verbena family. This is uh, the other Plicocepla species I was talking about, Plicocepla cicaceae, which is um, a 
parasitic hemiparasitic plant that grows on other plants so from the Laurentaceae this is polycarp polycarpaea spicata I do not have much to say about it but it is a small fairly insignificant looking plant um, that is typically found Polygula lineari, another of the polygula species which has the very characteristic flowers with the sort of plume-like uh, staminode column. This is a Podomagetan species which is a weed, a pond weed, um, which typically grows in a lot of the, the wadis. This is Pseudo lotus velosus um, from the Fabaceae, very, very um, woolly, hence the, the, the species name. This is the second common fern found in uh, Indofar and in Oman in general, Teres vitata, and that's along with Adianthum capillus veneris, are basically essentially the, the two species that you typically are going to find in Oman. This is Pulicaria argyrophylla. Argyrophylla refers, of course, to the, the silvery like leaves. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> Argentium, I guess, no. Maybe not. But anyway, it has a silvery color and uh, yellow flowers of the daisy family, Asteraceae. The typical composite flower structure, inflorescence structure of daisies. He has Pulicaria glutinosa, a closely related species. Sacrum raveni is one of the reed species that grows um, in a lot of the wadis and it can often be mistaken for a Phragmites reed, which is slightly different. Sarcostema viminalis is a succulent from the Apocynaceae. Um, you have these typically typical sort of rope-like stems, uh, no leaves. The stems act as phyllodes. They they photosynthesize and and produce food through photosynthesis. It's photosynthesis rather than um, well taking over the role of of a leaf. It's actually a modified leaf stalk and the main stem as well, which is behaving as, as a photosynthetic organ. This is Schweinfurthia pedicillata. These have very pretty flowers from the snapdragon family, and there are a few species. Here's another one, Schweinfurthia imbricata. Uh, always a delight to find you know, plants like this because you know, they have interesting little flowers, and um, I, I just love finding things like this it's it's always such a great surprise. Cedera glomerata, a very inconspicuous plant um, from the morning glory family, Convolvulaceae. Stipogrostis uniplumus, uh, one of the grass species. Uh, Stipogrostis plants typically have these very fluffy kind of uh, inflorescence heads, um, which is typical of them. Here's an example of Tamarix aphyla growing on the edge of a watercourse. You can see these very, very upright, uh, sort of sparsely vegetated stems, or all Typha, uh, Tamarix aphyla, sorry. And um, yeah, they tend to occur right on the upper edge of where a watercourse would be. This is one of the wadis that's actually, this was taken in one of the wadis that is very close to Hussik far. This is Teucrium stoxianum. Uh, they have these really, really interesting little stems. They, they kind of octopus-like with very, very closely clustered leaves and um, the leaves are succulent. So it helps reduce water loss by kind of um, clustering together like that. This is Typha domingensis, um, the resident cattail or bulrush from the family Typhaceae that occurs in Oman. Uh, the fluffy seed heads can be used to uh, kindle fires and the rhizomes are edible. They can actually be ground into a kind of flower and eaten. 
This is, I believe, a viola species, viola scenario. And I believe this might be a two. I may be wrong. This is a lovely little creeping plant, Delacampia scandens. Uh, scandens means spreading. Um, it has these really unusual flowers with nectaries, which are um, sort of, you can see these shiny globules of, they release these shiny globules of nectar that attract insects um, from the Euphorbia family. And there are other species of Delacampia found around the world, and this is the specific one found in Oman. This is Bentia fruticulosa from the Acanthaceae. This is a closer view of the flowers. We showed you the bushes earlier, or I showed you the bushes earlier in the beginning of the slideshow. And it's got very, very pretty little flowers, very characteristic structure for the Acanthaceae. Dipterygium glaucum, often confused with other yellow flowered bushes, just because of the structure of the bush itself. And um, an example would be the Ocridenus species and similar plants to that, Crotillaria, Egyptiaca, etc. This is Fagonia lantii, uh, similar to Fagonia ovalifolia. Um, another one of the purple flowered Fagonia species. Sarcostema viminale in flower. This is the, the bush that I was talking about that photosynthesizes through the stems and through modified uh, leaf petioles, but has no leaves. Gossypium stoxii, we've mentioned this before, is the wild cotton plant for Oman. Uh, Galonia orcheri. Uh, one of the many bushes that grows in, the, in Oman from the Rubiaceae. This is an interesting plant. This is found in very salty uh, water pans, Arthrocnemum macrostachium uh, from the goosefoot family Chinopodiaceae, which typically actually grows in saline kind of areas, um, either salt pans or along coastlines near a, um, near estuaries and typically in very arid areas. Um, these bushes are quite large. Uh, uh, one clump can cover several meters, square meters, um, and yeah, a very interesting plant. Uh, Delacampia scannens, once again mentioned, just another angle or view of the same species. Leptodenia pyrotechnica. Uh, this bush is, uh, as is typical of so many species of the Apocynaceae, a bush with vertical or upright branches, uh, spine-like in a sense, um, very, very many twig-like branches and no leaves. Pyrotechnica refers to uh, pyrotechnics as in, um, you know, firecrackers and fireworks because of the appearance of the flowers on the stems and they look like, you know, explosions that have occurred in, in the sky. This is Acolypha indica. Acolyphas, uh, many of them have edible leaves, which can be cooked into a kind of spinach. Lornea intabasi, another example of a Lornea species. Um, and what's interesting about them is they once again have these typical leaves of the daisy family. Comicarpus boisieri, which I've mentioned before um, from the Nectagenaceae. Datura metal. Daturas are moonflower plants. Um, they have these white flowers which are uh, sort of vase-like or cup-like and they produce these black seeds from the pods. You can see the green pod on the right, right when the pod dries out. It splits open and releases these black seeds, which are actually quite dangerous. They, you can chew them and get an hallucinogenic effect from them, but there's a very fine line between too much or enough and too much. And, and typically what happens is uh, people have lost their minds. Um, they've literally damaged themselves permanently from ingesting these seeds. Very dangerous. 
Cucumis profitorum, um, one of the cucurbit family members. Um, so a cucumber species that grows in many parts of, of Oman. Matina stoforensis, um, this is the spike thorn again, um, also called Gymnosporia dofrensis. You can see the spines on the growing on the branch and that's very characteristic of all species of this genus. Pergularia tomentosa, this is a better view of Pergularia. Um, here the creeper is more in focus than the previous picture I'd shown you. Um, from the Apocynaceae. It's got very woolly or um, silky leaves. Argemony mexicana, the Mexican poppy. Um, they, they have these yellow flowers. There's another species called Argemony acroleuca, which is white flowers, but this is typical. So uh, Papaveraceae from the poppy family. A very typical weed worldwide from South America. Aristolochia bracteolata. Um, this family is very interesting. Uh, the, the flowers form these sort of brownish flowers which um, look a little bit like a pipe. They've, they're shaped a little bit like a pipe, um, a curved pipe, smoking pipe, and um, they're also called birth warts or calico pipes and they had, yeah, very characteristic. There's a species from Brazil, Aristolochia brasiliensis, that has giant um, flowers. In fact, they are probably the size of a, a football. Here's another picture of the same plant. This is Jatropha dophorica from Euphorbiaceae. Um, it kind of has these palm mate leaves and um, yeah, it's, it's a small little tree, uh, very characteristic. You find these in Socotra too, on the island of Socotra, which belongs to Yemen. Um, this is Delinix elata. It has yellow flowers and is from the flamboyant family, actually. Not the Fabaceae, but if I remember correctly. But anyway, Delinix elata. Tamarindus indica, this is the tamarind tree. Um, this is used, the pods are used uh, for food, in particularly in the east. Euphorbia hadromortica, this is a, a very interesting uh, succulent. Obviously not very obvious to see uh, if you consider the, the dried out appearance and how well camouflaged it is amongst the rocks, but it does produce a crown of green leaves in the rainy season and it is a very interesting euphorbia. Here's another example of a specimen. You can see the the scars where the leaves um, actually formed the nodes uh, on the plant so it kind of had a, has a whirl-like structure. Here's Galonia or Keri again which has previously been featured. Aristolochia bracteolata you can see the pipe-like structure of the flower here. Datura metal, yeah, you can see the, the tube-like flower. Um, it has a long, long base, which is not visible in this picture, but uh, or easy to see. Campile land again. Taverniera cunefolia from the Fabaceae, pretty little bush, very similar to indigos. Tucrium folium. Um, also a very small creeping plant that's not always very obvious to see. Juncus rigidus, um, this is from the Juncaceae or Rush family and they have these very spiny leaves and typically found near water. Razia stricta as mentioned previously. This is a Cuscata planiflora Dodder species. Um, it's one of the parasitic plants that grows its haustoria into the, the stems of other plants and lives off it. So from the morning glory family. 
Cypher stemma ternatum. Um, it's one of the species of grape, like Cissus quadrangularis, which grows in Dauphar. Lufa cutangular. Um, it's one of the cucurbit family members. Uh, if you cut that pod open, it kind of has a um, spongy-like interior, which is used as a, a loofah or sponge to to wash with. Here's another example of a cucumber species. I'm not certain what this is. I don't think it's either of those species mentioned there. Bentia fruticulosa from the Acanthaceae. I've shown you a picture of the bush uh, further earlier on. Ricinus communis, the castor oil bean from the Euphorbiaceae. Sibiriza doforensis uh, from the Scipiodaceae. They have these very large uh, fleshy tubers that grow underground, but a very small little creeper with, with the leaves typical um, in Dauphar. It is an endemic to Dauphar. Ficus silicifolia, which has been mentioned. Dracaena cerulata, the dragon's blood tree uh, from Dracaeaceae. It's called the dragon's blood tree because it has um, red sap, which was called cinnabar in the past and was used medicinally in ancient times. This is on the Dauphar escarpment. This is a Zima tetracantha, the needle bush from the Salvadoraceae or mustard, um, Salvadoraceae must, uh, family. Moretia parviflora, once again mentioned before. Commifera gileadensis from the Bursaraceae or Mer family. The Commiferas, there are several species in Dauphar, and um, most of them have compound leaves and produce a, a latex or, or resin that, that has many uses. Heliotropium phytocancer typically with the white flowers and once again many species. Euphorbia larica which has been featured earlier. Capris cartilaginea which uh, these are the flowers earlier you saw the big red fruit of this um, creeping plant. Um, so Capris cartilaginea very impressive flowers. Typical flowers of the Caparaceae actually. Prosopis juliflora, this is one of the most common introduced uh, species in Oman. It grows in all the desert um, wadi courses or the water courses and it usually reproduces vegetatively rather than by seed and um, <coughs> it becomes quite a problem. Very dense and very spiny and is a huge problem. It, it smothers all other vegetation. This is a very interesting plant from the RAC Remusatia vivipara. It's um, from the Arum lily uh, family and is an endemic to Dauphar. And you typically find these in damper areas. There's a really good example of these um, in one of the wadis in Dauphar. A whole grove of them. Another cucumis or cucumber family species. Yes, the fruit, which is open, you can see the birds have been feeding on it, of Capris cartilaginea, which you, we've mentioned a couple of times now. Azun canariensa, with the little red flowers that you, you saw previously. Cypress crassipes, typical species of sedge. Trichodesma lacophyllum. Um, this is a different species of Trichodesma and uh, slightly larger flowers, uh, very characteristic um, flowers they have and um, very interesting flowers too. Kleinia saginata from the Asteraceae, uh, this is a not great example of one because it's it's so dried up and it's not the right season for it to be flowering etc but um, yeah uh, interesting succulent bush. Plicocephalus shimperi, which has yellow flowers, as opposed to Plicocephalus acacia, which is the red flowers. Once again, the parasitic plant. Periploca aphyla, with the purple flowers. Coculus balfori, 
which is the moonseed family I mentioned previously. Yeah, you can see the red berries that are produced. This is a Pluchia species. It is a new species found in Wadi K root in a very isolated area. And I was fortunate enough to actually help collect uh, specimens to be described for the first time to science. This is Comalina foscaoli. Uh, these plants typically can be used as an eye drop. Um, some of them have uh, a collection of, of sort of liquid, um, which would be the neck from the nectaries, and that can be used as an eye drop. Anogysis dophorica, um, one of the trees that is very common but somehow overlooked in Oman in the Dofar area. Capris cartilaginea flower in full bloom. Calignum commosum has these red fluffy uh, fruits which are actually edible and um, from the polygonaceae, so from the polygonum family. Boravia elegans mentioned previously from the Bougainvillea family. Dipterygium glaucum, which can be compared to a lot of other yellow flowering bushes which um, look very similar. Here is an example of a similar looking bush, Crotillaria egyptiaca. This is Tephrosia nubica. Burahavia elegans, a close view. Over Jovanica, featured previously, these fluffy flower heads can be used in pillows. Uh, Schwanfordia papillionaceae, as mentioned previously. Convolvius vergatus, also mentioned previously. Moretia parviflora, mentioned previously once again from the Brassicaceae. Pulicaria glutinosa, one of the many Pulicaria species. Merua crassifolia. Uh, one of the mention, uh, one of the species that has of the Caparaceae, they're one of the many species. There's the th three genera Merua, Capris, and um, Cadabra, which are the three genera that occur in Oman. So Caroluma, which is supposedly edible. Acrylocarpus orientalis uh, from the Malpighiaceae. These are really interesting uh, trees and they have these wing-like fruits. Um, which I found only a handful of specimens before in Oman, but very interesting. Iphono or Kerry, we've done. Richardia tingitana, a daisy family species, typical in a lot of the wadis, particularly in northern Oman. Uh, Juncus rigidus again. Mirua crassifolia, a different specimen. Juncus rigidus. Senchrosilieris, mentioned previously, a common grass species worldwide. Tribulus terrestris, uh, the puncture weed, which damages car tires. Gruea, Erythraea, here's a very dried up bush, not very obvious to see. Um, the wild raisin bushes, as they're sometimes called. Here's a closer view of the edible fruits. Ocridenus arabicus, a uh, very characteristic bush with yellow flowers. Diplotaxis hara, the hairy uh, flower that's from the Capra from the Brassicaceae or mustard family. Here's another specimen of Acrylocarpus orientalis with the wing-like fruits or pods. Ficus cordata, another fig species. So we've done Ficus salicifolia, Ficus Sycamorus and Ficus cordata. This is Uriops arabicus, very si similar to um, some other species of, of daisy, so you just have to be very careful. Like Iphona, that genus um, has very similar looking flowers, but you can see the leaves are quite different here for Uriops arabicus. Echinop spinosissimus has been mentioned previously. Juniperus excelsa or Serevshanica, I'm not sure how they're going to pronounce it, but anyway, um, this is 
a juniper species. It may have changed names now, uh, but it is found in the mountains of Dafar. I'm not in Dafar, sorry, in the mountains of North Northern Oman, um, in the Hedjar Mountains. Um, yeah, so one of the juniper species. This is Dodonea viscosa, and um, these are trees that are medium sized and they grow in sort of arid areas from the lychee family. This is Cupressaceae, um, another juniper excelsis specimen. This is Trichodesma hildebrandtii. These are the fruits. They had the characteristic flowers, remember. But these are the fruits um, of, the, of the plant. Sarcostem of Manali again, without the leaves. No leaves, of course. It doesn't have leaves. Helianthemum citrinum from the Cystaceae. We've mentioned this before. Arcanus arabicus. Pycnocyclocariona and Fossetia. Here's the Fossetia again. Trichodesma hildebrandtii, another one, and those might be the fruits of Dodonea viscosa, the sand olive. And Spergula phallax, um, a family, a member of the Caryophyllaceae or pink family. This one, I have no idea. Leucus inflator, the white plant, um, and then Ocridenus, the yellow. Um, Lucas inflate is from the Lamiaceae or Labiatia, the mint family. This is a Lavangula species. It's another one. It's Blepharus, Blepharus ciliaris. Um, it's kind of like the, the eyelash plant. It has Polygula muscatensis, a very pretty uh, flower and you can see very characteristic of that family. Sosimbrium erysthymoides from the Brassicaceae growing as a weed. Anticyrus arabica. Blepharispermum hirtum, this is in Dofar. Sticulia africana, African star chestnut. Over Artemisioides. It's a different species. The previous slide was a different species of Ova Jovanica. Blepharis skindica, also from the Acanthaceae, related to Blepharis um, ciliaris. Iphiona sinicioides, another species of Iphiona. Ammonia baxifera. Um, this is a plant that grows in quite a lot of areas. Anticyrus arabica again with a yellow with a blue flower. This one's been shown already, Cedera glomerata. Viola cinerea, done brief previously. Anticyrus arabica here. Tephrosia apollinia. Foscaolia tenacissima. Very characteristic woolly leaves of this and red uh, stems of this plant. Typical weed like plant. Agarolobium roseum, you can see the pod there, very characteristic pod with the trifoliate leaves. Comites abyssinica, very fluffy bush. Fossetia dophorica, one of the Fossetia species. This is Prosopis juliflora again. Halopeplus perfoliata, this is in the southern coast, or sort of eastern coast, southeastern coast of. Um, Oman and it's typical of beach or dune areas especially areas with a high saline um, content. Panicum turgidum is one of the grass species very spiny typically growing on the grass dunes I mean on the sand dunes. Um, Arthrocnemium macrostachium has been mentioned before typical of saline conditions. Ocridens hosuciticus, this is also typical of the Dukum area of Oman. Heliotropium cochiae, this is another species of Heliotropium. Um, I think I've mentioned 
at least two other species, in, excluding this one. Suede moscatensis tensor, um, one of the amaranthaceae. Um, these typically help hold dune sands together. A vaquilia or acacia Ehrenbergiana. This is a low growing acacia um, that is bush like and tends to form a kind of pedestal of um, a pedestal of, of sand. So it kind of forms a dune at its base by trapping the sand. This is uh, Senegalia or Acacia tortillis again, the typical umbrella like thorn. Cornulaca monocantha found in the Ducumaria. Limonium stoxii, um, one of the sea lavender species. Salsala rubescens, um, another bush typical in the Ducumaria. Pulicaria glucinosa, we've mentioned this before. Phoenix duck tilifera, also typical area. Uh, Nanonops richiana, um, which is the, the indigenous fan palm species that occurs in the area. Laziarius scandicus, a grass species. Cypress arenarius, a sort of coastal grass uh, sedge species. Halopyrum mucronatum um, is a grass species that holds desert sands, and um, this is a typical example of Halopyrum mucronatum. Salvadora persica, close up of the toothbrush tree or bush. Coculus pendulus, we saw a previous specimen on a rock face. This is one growing on a tree. This is a, a very unusual morning glory species, Convolvulus hystrix. It doesn't have that creeping, um, sort of creeper-like um, spreading habit of, of most morning glories. Instead, it forms this very closed, rounded bush. Um, Convolvulus hystrix. Hystrix refers to porcupines because of its spiny nature. And this is found in a small area in Dukum, in the Dukum region. Lysim shore is um, one of the honey bushes. Um, it's, it's got a honey thorns. They've got a lot of thorns and they're fairly small bushes that grow in the area. Deuterygium glaucum, often mistaken with Crotillaria aegyptiaca. Rumex visicarius, a uh, common dock or bladder dock, a uh, typical weed growing in many areas. This was actually photographed in Muscat on the side of the road. Another weed, Anagalus arvensis, an introduced species from the Primulaceae or Primula family, uh, blue or scarlet pimpernel. Um, here's a sacrum species. This is Potomagetan natans. Rachardia tingitana. Pfizerhynchus cameri pistrum. This is a, a very delicate kind of plant that typically, typically grows in Oman and is from the mustard family. Now the hairy Diplotaxis horror. And Geranium muscatensis. Geranium species, obviously. Zizifus spina christi has been mentioned before. Comicarpus boisiera also. Convolvulus too, Geranium muscatensis, and Galonia ochera, and Diorophytum indicum. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the channel. Thank you.